Mr. Beast sunk a yacht in his most recent video somewhere in a lake in North Carolina. And guys, I think I found the exact lake. It's right here behind me. And what I have to do now is explore, try to find that missing boat, see what it looks like now and get some pictures of it for y'all. Let's get into it. Today, I'm here at Fantasy Lake Adventure Park. And if that background looks familiar there, that's because that is the same background inflatable obstacle course that Jimmy was standing near when he was talking to the shop owner somewhere on the cliffs over here with the $1 yacht. I know they placed it in the water, it sunk down, and as you can see, we have a few things marked here by buoys by the lake, but as far as I know, no one has marked the new boat. So Fantasy Lake used to be a rock quarry. It was started in the 1800s, and basically sometime in the early 1900s, they hit a really deep hole, which started a spring and filled and flooded the lake. Inside the lake now, there's different things, such as some old mining equipment, like a rock crusher, which is down uh, to that buoy there that you might be able to see. And there's an old road that used to be serviced uh, that would basically allow you to come in this way, drive a truck down, load up the truck with rocks, follow it down this way, et cetera. And there's actually a bus at one of these buoys here that's parked on top of that road. And then some other stuff for training equipment like uh, platforms and you know a shallow plane that you can kind of see uh, the shadow of right here, that light spot is actually a, a plane that's right there. And some other things that people have sunk in the water over time to allow us to explore. So as far as I know, no one has marked the uh, spot that the boat is. I know they were standing on a cliff over here somewhere when they lowered the boat in the water, but I don't know where that boat is. And I do know that this is the lake that he used. So today we're gonna explore, check out the lake a bit, see my local dive spot, and see if we can find Mr. Beast's missing $1 yacht that sunk as soon as him and Chandler got on top of it. So for the search today, I got quite a bit of gear with me. I have uh, my BCD, my backplate and wing from Hollis. I got a steel tank here to give me a little bit of extra gas. I got an extra one in my car. Got my fins, gloves in case we find the boat. It might be a little bit rusted out, so I want to make sure we have there. Of course, bug spray and sunscreen. I got a backup mask as well as two GoPros, a compass, surface whistle, etc. So I'm going to gear up everything here, go ahead and get in the water, and we'll start our search. After swimming out to one of the training platform buoys, I decided to follow a known line past the bus I talked about. This line continues past the bus into deeper water and areas that most divers don't go to often as I've always been told there's really not much to see out that way. As I swim along, you'll notice we have some interesting features in this lake such as the Angelica doll from the Rugrats strung up, as well as some local wildlife too. These platforms here are used by instructors like myself to help kind of corral our students when we're doing our training. As I continued down the line, I came across the bus that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. This bus has been down here a pretty long time and you can tell just how much damage it has on it. If you ever come to visit, feel free to check it out, but I really don't recommend going inside unless your buoyancy is really on point. Technically, it is an overhead environment, so there is that factor, but just in general, there's a really rusty, sharp metal edge pieces like all over the place here, and with those jagged edges like that, unless your buoyancy is perfect, you just don't want to go in there. You'll wind up cutting yourself, cutting your gear, or something like that. As I'm going through this culvert, I'm actually moving into an area I've never really been to before. I moved to North Carolina about a year ago, and I just really haven't explored this line to see where it goes at the end. I do know that it goes to deeper and more open water, so I'm hoping there's a chance that we have a new boat to explore on the end of the line and we can find Mr. Beast's boat. But one thing I wanted to point out is the visibility in the lake right now. It's probably about 10 feet or so, but later you'll see just how horrible it can get and how much sediment and silt is in the water, so keep that in mind as we go along. Also, if you're wondering about the color and footage quality or anything like that, this is actually the same GoPro that I use for most of my underwater shots. And then I added another one onto my head mount now too. And there's just so much sediment and low visibility, it was kind of hard to keep the color correction done properly. So I apologize if you see some, you know, back and forth shades and things like that, but welcome to freshwater diving. We dive in green water and this is what it looks like sometimes. On the other side of these rings that we use for buoyancy training, it's pretty much completely unexplored for me. I've, I've never been out that way, and I we're, guess we're gonna find out what's out there together. You'll see as the visibility started to get worse, I decided to okay the line a bit, just in case it got even worse and we got into more of a silt-out situation, because, you know, if it stays at a few feet, it's not a big deal, but if it starts to get to where I can't see my hand in front of my face, which has absolutely happened in this quarry, I decided, being out in an area that I didn't know as well, I'd go ahead and okay that line, just in case. After a little bit though, it was staying at a few feet visibility, so I felt like it was okay to go ahead and just kind of dive like normal. I don't need to okay the line, I'll just stay right next to the line in this case. 
At this point, however, I, I kind of had to start checking, like, how long had I been diving and start thinking about how long since that culvert and kind of going past the buoyancy rings and, you know, basically how long have I been diving and following this line. From that ring platform, I haven't seen anything but rock formations, and again, I don't know where this line leads. I've never been this far out before, so I kind of just decided, okay, let's keep swimming. Let's see where the line's tied off to. I have plenty of gas. I've only been in the water a few minutes still, so we'll go ahead and take a look here. And for reference, I'm at about 25 feet right now, which is right at the thermocline that we have in the lake. That thermocline adds to the poor visibility, and it also means that I'm bouncing between the low 70 degrees and mid 60 degrees Fahrenheit so kind of bouncing right between a cold layer and a little bit warmer layer there. As I finally reached the end of this line, I was really surprised to find these two cars. I really had no idea they were here and kind of had to take a moment to figure out what I wanted to do and, you know, do I want to try to do a search pattern from this point to look for the yacht or go ahead and surface and just kind of double check my bearings, like how far am I from the dock, how far down the line from the bus was I? Um, you know, I know where the bus is because, again, that's a marked buoy, but these cars out here aren't marked and I didn't know exactly how far out I was, so I wanted to check that. As I made my, you know, slow and safe ascent, I recalled that I was going to go to the surface in the middle of the lake and, you know, this lake doesn't allow motored vehicles on the water at all, but just recently they opened up a whole water park and that's the, the wee bit obstacle course you might have seen in the background of uh, the earlier video or Mr. Beast video. And they also have kayakers and paddle boarders and stuff like that. So I decided, you know, let me just take a quick look around right below the surface in case there's someone right next to me. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and pop up. Once I was on the surface, I decided I'd go ahead and swim back to that buoyancy ring platform and then descend back down along that descent line and start looking for what we call the deep plane, which is another one of the marked items, but I wanted to try to find it underwater. You know, we are exploring after all, and if I could find it, maybe a new line that led there or, you know, a certain uh, distinguishing path on the on the bottom of the floor that I could follow, I wanted to know about it because, you know, I do guide students through this area and we don't normally go that deep, but Maybe there's some areas that I could take them that I haven't gone before for maybe a more advanced class or something like that where I wanted to take them to somewhere that, you know, isn't the same place that they go every time they come to the quarry for training. You can see as I move away from this buoyancy platform more into the open lake just how bad the visibility is getting. I'm also getting a bit deeper now, closer to 30 feet or so, about 10 meters, and I'm in the thermocline for sure, so that temperature dropped to around 65 degrees or so after my computer updated and, and showed the correct temperature. Because this quarry and lake doesn't really have any current or flow or anything like that, there's nothing that moves the sediment around really well, so you can see how much is just floating in the water, causing that poor visibility. And again, being at the thermocline, it just kind of floats right there. I will say, I got a little bit off track swimming into the open like this, and I came across some debris and kind of started following that. Then I saw this trike, and I had no idea that trike was even here. I never heard of anyone even talking about it, so I actually planned to talk to some of my dive buddies about it to ask if they've seen it and you know how to get back to that spot specifically if there's key navigation points. I decided to stay a little bit closer to the bottom to help me navigate back toward the bus, and you can see, again, just how much random debris is down on the bottom of the lake here. And once I got to that bus, I decided I'd go ahead and surface again, reorient myself, and with poor visibility, I decided, you know, let me just surface swim to what we call buoy 12, it's the one marked number 12, and that's what we call the deep plane, which is, you know, a little bit further down there. Descending onto this deep plane is always fun as it's a bit bigger than the shallow plane that I mentioned before and it's usually not crowded with divers because it's honestly a lot colder down there and most divers just try to stay above the thermocline. Uh, we use again this quarry often for training and a lot of the training we do doesn't need to be deeper than 30 feet or about 10 meters. So, um, you know, again, people just don't come out this far. There's less to see, it's colder, etc. And to be fair, you know, there is plenty to see in the shallow water, like the shallow plane, but I don't think the yacht is going to stay hidden in just 15 to 20 feet of water. The visibility over the deep plane isn't too bad right now, and, you know, I couldn't see it from the surface, but soon after I started my descent, it came into view. And for reference, the top of the plane is around 30 to 35 feet, I believe, or about 10 10 meters ish. So, you know, you can judge the visibility off of that. As I got over to the tail of the plane, I remember one of my dive buddies telling me about this spooky playground that Fantasy Lake has. And again, it's not anything that's marked at all, and I haven't actually been to it before. They did say that if you line yourself up with the fuselage of the plane and you basically swim away from the tail rudder directly out you know, in line with the fuselage, you'll end up at the playground. So I decided to line myself up and start swimming and see what would happen. As soon as I started to head out, you can see that again, I just have very low visibility. 
I descended a bit, I wanted to be able to see the bottom and not to get too far off course or anything like that while I look for the playground. And, you know, eventually the playground will lead to the rock wall, and that rock wall is where Jimmy and his guys were standing before the boat was uh, dropped into the water. So I'm hoping that, you know, this will basically put me in a good line and a good path in terms of kind of more of a random search for where this boat or yacht might actually be. So I'm swimming along and then right ahead of me, I see a floating skeleton doll, which literally came out of nowhere. And again, I haven't been to this playground before, so I just really didn't even know that this was there. And I guess that's why they call it a creepy or spooky playground. It also looks like someone put a bunch of like Christmas decor around here. I see Santa sitting there like you would see in the lawn normally, and you see some slides and other kid toys and stuff like that. And you know, I can definitely see why they call it a spooky playground because honestly, like all of the sediment that's built up on these over time, it kind of makes it look like a bit of a wasteland of old toys that were just abandoned and you know, left out there. Like imagine seeing this on dry land and just seeing these old toys kind of half falling apart, starting to degrade and just covered in stuff. It's kind of like an apocalyptic scene, right? So it was kind of crazy to see it and it kind of creeped me out a little bit too, to be honest. You know, when I'm under there, especially being further from other divers, there wasn't really any sound around me except for the bubbles as I took breaths. So just seeing a bunch of abandoned toys like this covered in dirt kind of gave me a, a little bit of a weird vibe, which was kind of interesting. I also thought the playground was going to be a bit smaller, and it actually led me right to the cliff wall that Mr. Beast and the guys were standing on at the start of his video. So, you know, I, I hadn't hit it just yet, so I decided, okay, you know, let me go ahead and ascend along this buoy over this deep, broken platform and kind of figure out where I was in relation to the cliff face, just so I can, again, get my bearings, make sure that I'm doing a, a decent search. I hadn't pulled out the compass yet, to be fair, but... I know the quarry fairly well, and even though I'm in these unexplored areas, there's a lot of markers that I, I'm familiar with. Like, I've been to this deep platform once before, I knew that this was over here, so I kind of wanted to just double check where I was and make sure we were good to go. Unfortunately, on the surface here, the GoPro audio didn't pick up exactly what I was saying well, so I'll go ahead and just talk over it instead. So, basically, right now, I'm, I'm realizing, okay, you know, I still haven't found the yacht, but I'm getting closer and closer to the cliffs, and again, pretty sure that's where Jimmy or Mr. Beast was standing on the video based off of the background of the the wee bit obstacle course which is that floating obstacle course in the background of his video you know based on the framing of his where it's located on the lake I think it's gonna be in front of me there and as I kind of point out in front of me I'm saying you know there's a sunken glass bottom boat that's down there and that is marked by a buoy I've been out to that before so I plan to swim to a different buoy that we have descend along it move along the cliff wall and then move towards that glass bottom boat buoy underwater and basically along the wall there I'm gonna to try to find the yacht because you know they lowered it in the water there it's got to be somewhere over there uh, one of the key things that I called out here that again unfortunately that audio got a little bit garbled is in the video you can see the name of the boat it's on the stern of the boat on the back of the boat and it's called Winter Haven so if I do find a yacht underwater I want to make sure it's the Winter Haven so I can say yep that's definitely the same boat now as I descend down here I notice that the visibility over here is very very bad and you know there's some open water classes going on kind of nearby in this ramp area where people can kind of walk in we call it a beach entry it used to be the service road where people would come in with the the trucks to haul you know rocks in and out and open water divers often just kick up a lot of silt also being by the rock cliff face I'm sure there's probably a lot more runoff and things like that too so the visibility just isn't that great so as I'm descending I'm using the descent line to kind of hold on to to help control my descent a bit remember I'm holding a camera in one hand I have to control my descent some equalize etc so it's a little bit of task loading and I just wanted to be careful not to rock it to the bottom and not equalize properly okay so we've descended onto this deeper platform and now it's time to swim to the cliff face so we can follow it kind of just along the side and look for the winter haven that's Jimmy's boat that they lowered in the water it sank we got to find it and again the visibility is just not good here there's so much sediment around here only a few feet of visibility in most of the areas over here and these trees kind of just come out of nowhere but I know that those trees are also marking the cliff face for me they probably came in uh, during a storm or something like that and, and fell over into the water and you know I basically decide at that point okay let me turn and I'll start following the wall and keep the wall on my right shoulder and just kind of uh, follow this this section here and see if we can find the yacht and you know then I see this line and this line is just coming from the surface somewhere and I actually have no idea where it leads or why it's tied off here I haven't seen it before and I'm, I'm starting to think maybe I don't know if this was used as part of the mechanisms when they lowered the boat in or, or what but 
I swear I haven't seen this line before and I have been in this area, so I'm not sure if this is new or not, but rather than you know looking at that line and figuring that out, I decided to just follow the cliff face still, keep the wall on my right hand side, and that way we can just kind of find you know where, where this yacht is. It's gotta be along here somewhere. I will say that my trim is definitely not perfect here, so if you're screaming at me in the comments, I, I understand, but I'm also quite a bit off the bottom at this point, and I'm really trying to locate this yacht, so I have my head way more up than normal. Um, rather than just kind of barely looking ahead, I'm, I'm really trying to look further ahead as far as I possibly can to locate this yacht, and you know, yeah, so unfortunately, yes, my trim is a little bit off here too. Uh, but I do see this other platform as well, and then I notice that there's something a little bit further out in the distance as well. There's a few other divers out there, even a rebreather diver, which I haven't seen before, and then it hits me. This is it, guys. We found it. This is the Winter Haven. This is literally the exact same $1 yacht that Mr. Beast, aka Jimmy, sunk in his video, and I just can't believe we found it, and I can't believe other divers beat me to it. Oh gosh, so you know, as I approach the stern, I confirm this is definitely the Winter Haven. So I decide I'm gonna go ahead and swim around the wreck first, just kind of observing it from the outside. Decide if I am gonna penetrate it, I wanna know how it's looking underwater first, how it's sitting. Um, kind of just a good rule of thumb and kind of a habit that I've built. Even for this yacht, it doesn't look like the inside is, is too big, but I wanna make sure that, you know, again, I'm not. Uh, just rushing right into the yacht and, and not taking a look first and what's funny is if you look closely as I move around You'll actually see some of the GoPro mounts that mr. Beast team must have left when they were filming um, In the video the, the boat went down so fast that I'm sure they didn't even have time to try to remove those So I guess in the future maybe I can clip off my own GoPro to these mounts if I wanted to now, as we come up to the top of the boat, you'll actually see the wheel and where the throttle are. And, you know, th again, there's some parts in Jimmy's video that you'll see where this is the exact same spot. And then back down to the horns here, you'll see someone that uh, wrote Mr. Beast as a little tag with, you know, their finger in the dirt or sediment here that's been built up on the boat already. So, Mr. Beast, awesome. Someone found it before me, but hey, you know what? I found it as well, which is pretty great. And, you know, from the looks of it, this boat was absolutely falling apart before Jimmy sunk it. And, you know, it's really no surprise to me at all on why it started sinking so fast. The top side and, and outside has fallen apart. And as we'll see in just a moment, the inside's mostly just a wood frame with plywood. And, you know, again, it's kind of easy to tell why it started falling apart. Now, unfortunately, these other divers wanted to go in just before me, so I had to let them go in first before I went in. And I say unfortunately because they kicked up a lot of sediment right outside and getting up on top of this platform to enter the wreck, but luckily inside it wasn't too bad. Now, as I start swimming in, you can see the yacht itself is fairly small inside compared to the other ones in Mr. Beast's video, which I guess makes sense. This was the $1 one, and you know we can't really compare it to the, what was it, the $100 million one or anything like that. But, uh, you know, like I said, the inside is basically just framed wood, and there's some electrical wiring here and plywood on the floor, and that's really about it. There's not too much to look at here otherwise. And, you know, with the nails and the boards kind of sticking out a little bit, the copper wiring that's been left around here, etc., it's actually a little bit hazardous. And in the future, this is actually going to be a bit of a rough wreck to enter and explore because when that wood rots out, which it absolutely will do, those wires are just going to be kind of hanging there and there's going to be a lot of nails that probably just, you know, float down to the bottom and sit on the bottom of the wreck there. So it'll be a little bit more rough in the future, but for now it was kind of cool to check it out. Now, before I head out, I decide there's one more thing I gotta do, and I decide I gotta leave my mark in this junction box. Now, I know it'll probably disappear quickly, but if you do happen to dive on the Mr. Beast Yacht Wreck, is what I'm calling it, take a picture of yourself with it if you find it, and, you know, say, hey, look, Circle H Scuba sticker, cool. On the way out, I decided to turn off my torch as I just really didn't need it now and we're heading out into the daylight. And guys, I am pumped that we found Mr. Beast Yacht. If you want to learn how to scuba dive like this, check out this video so you can join me sometime. And if you made it this far, send this video to Mr. Beast so he knows I found his missing yacht. With that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving. <laughs>